Hello, it's Mr. Kozeb, and today I'm going to be talking about creating alphabet photography, which you can use to spell out words or names using photographs of objects in nature that look like letters. So I'm going to give you some examples of what alphabet photography is. I have this um, pulled up uh, on my on uh, in a browser here, and I'm just looking at different examples through Google Images. So you've probably seen this kind of thing before. So you can see here the word smile spelled out with letters that are really just pictures of things that look like the letters. So it's a really um, creative photography assignment and uh, allows you to develop your eye as a photographer and just get some experience taking different types of pictures and have fun and being creative. And uh, I know that sometimes people create photography like this and then they actually give this or have it printed out and give it to somebody as a gift or something. So, um, so starting with this one smile here, you can see that there's different types of shots and you can see that um, the the way that the letters have been put together they're all about the same size and they spell out a word so a good idea here is to spell out for example your name but if you have a different word you want to spell out you can do that there is an assignment i've made for this so i hope you check that out so that you know exactly what you're supposed to do so you'll be taking these photos on your phone um, and you'll have to go outside and uh, potentially around your your house or wherever you live and find things to take pictures of that look like the letters that you're going to need. Now, I also encourage you to just take letters, uh, pictures of other letters, even if you don't need them for your word, just for practice and for fun. There are some rules and some tips for when you do this. Uh, you have to take all the pictures yourself. So you can't go on Google and download images taken or that other people, images that other people have created because this assignment requires you to do it yourself. Um, we're going to go with black and white for this. So you can see that making these images black and white does have kind of a nice effect to it. It can work in color as well, but for our purposes, we're going to do black and white because it does give it kind of a classy look and kind of it just the thing is with color is you might have all sorts of different colors that won't necessarily go together. So to make it black and white, it sort of makes everything go together a little bit nicer. Now I'm going to encourage you to get close to the things you're taking pictures of. So in the examples here, you can see that the letters really fill up each of the pictures. Uh, and that's what you want. You don't want it to be sort of small in the frame. You want it to be really taking up the whole frame as much as possible so that it's clear that it's a letter. Um, you're going to use your cell phone and you're going to have to find a way to transfer the photos from your phone to the computer. Um, I'm not going to go into how to do that, but hopefully you can figure that out. You might be able to do that by plugging your phone into your computer with a cable. You might have to email the pictures to yourself or use AirDrop or something. Uh, I'm going to have to leave that to you to figure out how to do that. So I wish you luck. And once you have all your pictures, you're going to be editing them and putting them together in uh, an online piece of software called Photopea. So I'm going to be demonstrating that right away. Um, what else? Oh, there is a rule. You can't take a picture of a letter that actually is just like on a sign or something. So in this example, that doesn't really count because clearly that was like a sign that said P on it or something. Really, you're trying to find examples of these letters occurring in places that they're not really meant to occur. So this is kind of cheating. You're not allowed to do that just to make it a little bit more interesting. All right. So we're going to go into Photopea um, because I've actually already found some images here. I've uh, got them in a folder here and you can see that I have uh, two A's, an R and an S, and I'm just going to spell out the, um, the name Sarah with those letters. So we're going to go to Photopea. So what you're going to need to do to use Photopea is uh, go, go into Chrome as a browser, first of all, which is the browser with the little beach ball. It works best in Chrome. So I suggest you use that. And then you can just uh, open up a new tab and type photo and then P, like, like a uh, vegetable P, dot com. And it should take you to this. All right, so again, this assumes that you've already taken all your images and uh, you have them sitting around on your computer ready to go. So we'll walk through that process. 
All right, so PhotoP, it's a free um, online imaging editor. And it's based on Photoshop, which you could also use or you may have used. I'm suggesting you use PhotoP here just because it's free and everyone should be able to use it. But if you have Photoshop or if you have another way you'd like to do this, you can do that as well. Okay, so in PhotoP, we're going to start with new project. And uh, there's a bunch of templates available. I'll just make that full screen. There's a bunch of templates available. Obviously, we're not going to use any of these. We're going to go probably over to, pho where is it, screen. Go to screen, and you can see there's different preset sizes here. This is basically what size document are we going to create. And I'm going to suggest you use full HD, which is 1920 by 1080 pixels, and click on that. You can give it a name up here. Hey, that was my name. And uh, make sure the background's white. And once you have that, you can press create. All right. So this is PhotoP. This is our background. There's nothing in here. Uh, there's a lot of tools. There's different things you can do. I'm not going to go into a lot of that right now. I'm just going to sort of show you how to import your images and uh, turn them to black and white and arrange them on the screen and basically crop the image down. That's what I'm going to explain right now. Uh, and before I start, I'm just going to mention that you should be aware of the universal undo keyboard shortcut, which is Control Z, which you can use if you ever make a mistake to just press Control Z and go back a step. So uh, get used to that one. It's very useful. All right, so let's bring in some images. So we're going to go to File, Open and Place is what we want. This is going to allow us to open and place an image in here. So click on that, and uh, you'll have to navigate to your folder. Mine's on my desktop, Alphabet Photography. And I might as well start with the S, because that's the first letter. So double click on that, and it'll bring it in here. And uh, you can see it's selected already. And I can click it and drag it and move it around. And that's obviously what I need to be doing. This image is probably too big. I'll probably need to resize it. So I can resize it simply by clicking and dragging in the corner. But you're going to notice that if I do that, I can, in fact, squish or stretch or basically distort the image size. And I don't want to do that. Um, because it's actually it's destroying the image quality when I do that. So I'm going to use that keyboard shortcut Control Z right now, and it's going to go back to its original form. And now what I'm going to do is when I'm resizing this, I'm going to hold the Shift key on my keyboard. And the reason I do this is because you'll see when I hold Shift, it now is constraining the aspect ratio. It's basically keeping the uh, length and width of the image in proportion to one another, so it's not going to squish it or anything like that, and it'll look a lot better. So hold Shift to do that resize to a good size, and then let go. OK, and there's our S. I'm also going to, uh, before I go any further, convert this to black and white, because that's sort of one of the parts of this assignment. So to do that, with this image still selected, I'm going to go up to Image, Adjustments. And in here, I'm going to choose black and white. Now you'll notice there are other adjustments you can make, brightness, contrast, levels. You might need to make some of these, and you're welcome to do so and mess around with that. Um, but I'm going to just, in this example, go to black and white, click on that, and it pops up a dialog box. Now I can move this over here so I can see the picture. And this basically allows me to control how it's turning this uh, color image into black and white. And it basically allows me to adjust like how is the red displayed once it's converted to black and white. Because this image is made up of all sorts of colors. And so to convert it to black and white, in fact, there's quite a lot that occurs when you do it. So I can sort of change some of this if, if I want to get a different look. In this case, it's probably not a big deal. I can kind of just leave it. But you might want to mess around a little bit to get a different type of effect. I'm pretty happy with that. Once I do that, I press OK. Great. Letter number one is in there. Let's bring our next image in. So we're, we'll do the same thing. File, open and place, and we'll go find one of the A's, starting with that one. All right, let's drag this over here. And of course, we can see this image is much bigger than that one. So let's resize it, holding Shift to make it the same size, uh, or about the same size. And in fact, there's a little guide that's popping up that's telling me when I do that there that I'm snapping it to the same location as that image. And I can also try to scale this up to be sort of exactly the same size as that one. I think that's pretty good. Now, you'll see that this image isn't as wide as this one. That's fine. It doesn't need to be perfect. 
Your images, if you took them all on the same phone or camera, they'll likely all be the same size. You're just going to want to make sure that you're shooting in the same format. So you don't want to do some in landscape and some in, in portrait. You're going to want to do them all consistently. All right. Now, this image, I'm good with it being placed there. I can press the, the uh, check mark, and it puts it there. Um, by the way, there's a few things I'll mention here. Um, this is your layer panel on the side here. So each of these objects is uh, represented as a layer in Photoshop, sorry, Photo P. And um, it shouldn't matter too much for this assignment, but it's just worth being aware that the layers sort of makes it so that these objects can be above or below. So if I were to put this over here, you'll see that it's actually on top of the S because the layer is above the S here. Uh, I could switch it, I could drag this in here and make it below the S and then you'll see, oh, that didn't work. How do I switch it? There we go. Then you'll see that the A actually goes below the S because it's below the S here. All right. What I can also do is check um, the visibility. I can click that to make the layer visible or not. But I want to put this one back on top, and I really want there to be some space. Uh, so just be aware of the layers there. You shouldn't need to mess around with that too much, but it's good to be aware of it. So I have my transform controls showing for this picture, which is because I have it checked off up here. So you might want to turn that off just so it's not um, showing you those handles the whole time. It doesn't really matter. But if you do want to resize the image, you can just click on those and then click on the, uh, the layer that you'll want to be resizing. So yeah, the layers do kind of matter. And then you can resize. OK, so this one also is in black and white, black and white already, meaning I don't really need to do anything else to it. So that's kind of nice. I will continue bringing in my other images. S-A-R, right. Let's move that over and kind of line up and try to get a consistent spacing between. It doesn't need to be perfect, but it's good to get it close. I'm going to hold Shift again. I'm going to resize, and I'm going to try to line it up pretty nicely. It's pretty close. So don't worry about this being perfect. Just do your best. Press OK. My trans transform controls are gone. It's looking good. Let's do the last one the second A. And this also is a point that I should mention that um, if you have more of the same letter in the name, make sure you're using different pictures to represent that same letter. So in this case, I have this for an A and this for an A. OK, this image is actually too small, so I can scale it up a bit. Usually when you're scaling up an image, you're, at, you're actually going to lose image quality. So it might lose a bit of quality uh, as I scale this image up to be the same size as the others. But I'm just going to have to live with that because it's a little small. However, you shouldn't have this problem if you're finding, if you're uh, taking all the images on your same device, because basically your device will have a uh, consistent image size. So they should all be the same for you. So anyway, let's line this up, hold shift, make it a bit bigger. I'm not making it too much bigger, so you can't see too much of a loss in quality there. So it actually looks fine. And I will click, uh, oh yeah, I'll just press OK up there and uh, there. That's that. So that looks pretty good. I'm just going to move that one down there. Yeah, that looks pretty good. OK. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually crop this image because you're going to see you know, I have all this extra space around the border here. Um, but before I do that, I'm actually going to add or change the color of the background here. Oops, I moved that accent. Now, you might like it being white, which is fine. Um, but I actually think I'm going to go for a darker color. And how I'm going to do that, I'm just going to try to move that a bit closer, uh, is I'll click on my background layer, which is this. And I'm going to have to click this lock to unlock it so now I can edit it. And there's a tool in here. I think it's if I click and hold on my gradient tool. Uh, yeah, if you click and hold there, you see you can select the paint bucket tool. So do that. Click on that. And uh, now I can give this background a color, but I actually have to choose a color. By default, this is the color here. For some reason, it's red. I'm going to click in there, and I'm going to go for a gray, kind of like a darkish gray. Like, Let's try that. Press OK, and now I'm going to click in my background, and it just basically changes the entire background color to a gray. If I don't quite like that gray, I can just click in the color area here and choose a darker shade, maybe. Press OK. Click OK, click in there again. And um, I think that looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. OK, so last thing, or 
one of the last things to do is we'll now crop this. Now our crop tool is this one here. Click on that and it allows me to click and drag around these images. So I'm kind of trying to create a border. Uh, you can see that I'm trying to add the same amount of uh, space around the images on all sides. And once I do, I'll let go. And I now have to press this. Well, I can actually fine tune if I want to adjust it all. It's pretty good, probably. And I can press the check mark. And now it's cropped. OK, so there you go. Pretty nice. This is really the last thing to do now is to save this image so that it can be viewed outside of Photopea. Um, so the way we'll do that is to simply go up to File, and we will go to Export As. And for this type of file, uh, for this type of image, you're going to use a JPEG. JPEG is a compressed image format, and it's really good for when you have photographs. PNG is good if you have sort of line art, or if you're taking a screenshot from uh, Windows or your Mac or something, you can use PNG. But for actual photos, you're going to want to use JPEG. So click on that. It uh, allows us to change the width or height. I'm going to leave this. I don't want to change the size of the image. I'm happy with it. By the way, this is your, you can see it says 100%, and I have a hand tool. This is, in fact, the full size image. It's actually this big. What I'm being shown here is, in fact, a, a smaller preview. So this is good. It's better to have a bigger image so that if I do want to print this, it will actually turn out better. Uh, now, quality, I can choose whatever. Might as well make it 100%. So it's the best quality and shows you the file size down here, 344 kilobytes, which is a quite a small image. So that's really fine to maximize the quality. Press save. It will allow you to save this. And I'll give it a name like Sarah, because that's what it says. And I'll put it in that folder. Press save. And it should be saved there now. The only other thing that you might want to do is actually save this Photoshop or Photopea document in case you want to come back and edit this stuff later. So the way you would do that is to go File, Save as PSD. And this is just a different type of format. It just means that you can then open this up again and edit it later. So you might want to just do that like that. So now you can look at that in the future should you ever want to change it. OK, that's basically that. The next thing you'll do is you'll find that picture in your on your computer and you'll submit that online and hopefully it'll be at least six characters long and it'll say your name or some other interesting word or something all right so that's how you do that so have fun enjoy and i will talk to you later